Hello family, welcome to African Esquire TV. I'm your host, Tony Cherie. Before I get started, if you are someone of African descent in the U.S., I invite you to join a group we charge colonialism. This is an initiative that I started for the purpose of petitioning the United Nations for recognition that people of African descent in the United States are being colonized. And this is not just people who are of a descendant of enslaved Africans in the United States, but these are people who are of African descent, period, because the fact is that the system does not look at you and know whether or not you're from Africa, whether know whether or not you're from America, know whether or not you're from the Caribbean, they look at you and categorize you as black based on the color of your skin. So again, this is a petition that we're doing to the United Nations and we're declaring that we have been colonized by the United States government. And so if you are, if you are someone who is interested in joining this, I invite you to email wechargecolonialism at gmail.com, express your interest, and you can just tell me uh, just briefly, you know, wh why you think you would be qualified for this group. And in response, I will actually uh, send a, a, a membership survey to you if you are appropriate for this group. All right, so let's get started with today's subject. We are going to talk about what's going on in South Africa. If you did not know, there's a whole debacle going on in South Africa, and it really started really back where there were some xenophobic attacks happening in South Africa a couple months ago. And if you don't remember, a lot of people were upset, particularly people of Nigerian descent, because it felt like they were being targeted in South Africa uh, because of the country, uh, people in the country targeting businesses, targeting people for violence in South Africa who were of, Af of Nigerian descent, although it was also Africans of other descent. Um, so. So there's the kind of my understanding is that, is that there's kind of this angst in South Africa where people who are not from there have been targeted, but not people of European descent, not people of um, of Indian descent, because you know there's a large Indian population there, but people of African descent are targeted there, and this has culminated into all these events that have been happening today. So let's go to an article I'm going to read. This is a website called TimesLive.co.za, um, and I'm going to read from this article. Um, demand apologies from your real enemies. That's what Burner Boy stands firm on. The xenophobic uh, Burner Boy stands firm on xenophobic comments. If you don't know who Zerna Burner Boy is, he's an, a Nigerian artist. Um, if you if you're into Afrobeat music by by now, you should probably have heard of Z Burner Boy because he's basically the hottest artist this year. And he takes a firm stance against people who tell him to apologize for comments that he made earlier this year in regard to South Africans who are targeting people in their borders uh, with xenophobic. All right, so to read the article, Nigerian Musso, Burner Boy has responded to calls for him to apologize for the comments he made about xenophobia being real in South Africa. In a series of tweets in September, Burner Boy urged black foreigners living in South Africa to, to defend and protect themselves against xenophobic attacks. In a now deleted tweet, he told rapper AKA to beef up his security before giving him the middle finger. He promised to never set foot in South Africa again until the government wakes the F up and really, really performs a miracle. However, a month later, he was announced as part of the Africans Unite lineup to unify all Africans and speak out against a uh, Femicide. It is being held this weekend at the San Arena in Pretoria. While hundreds have called for the show to be canceled and the artist boycotted until he apologizes for his remarks, EFF leader Julius Malema defended the star. <coughs> After days of silence on the matter, Burner Boy took to Twitter at the weekend to thank Julius for his support and make it clear that he was coming despite the backlash. This is what the tweets say. They say, thank you, Julius Malema. Africa must unite and I am willing to die for that cause. Just like you, brother. I look forward to meeting you. Um, and he says in response to a tweet that says, listen here, Burner Boy, Julius is misleading. He will not do for Cole about this, any treatment you're going to get while you're here. Please do not come here to embarrass yourself. Do not come. <laughs> I beg you. <laughs> nah. Um, and Burner Boy retweeted this and said, LOL, I'm coming and you, you and anyone against it are going to have to kill me to stop me. He's bold for that. Um, he said, Venophobia was real in South Africa and that being South African did not make you more important than any other Africans. Another tweet reads, let's not act like xenophobia is not real in South Africa. Let's not act like Nigerians, Tanzanians, but Zimbabweans and many other Africans have not been victim in the last three years. Please let us all do our part to unite Africa. 
He also tweets, being South African does not make you more important than any other African. He rubbish claims that he had misled people about his xenophobic attacks and refused to apologize. Saying I mislead people and I make up xenophobic attacks and I should apologize? Really? In 2015, even I was a victim of the misguided hate, so I know. Go and demand apologies from your real enemies. I am not your enemy. I will not be called foreigner. I am African. Um, he goes on to, uh, to say, oh wait, in response, um, his comments sparked a, f a fresh outcry on social media. Burner Boy's former bestie, aka last week, who was a, a South African musician is my understanding, last week he called on the Musso to apologize, but said it was time to drop the matter and move on. AKA blamed the Department of Arts and Culture and Sports for funding the concert and suggested the government had failed its people. Um, so I'm going to skip all of this and, uh, let's talk about what's going on. So as, as the tweets say, um, a, a lot of people are upset because Burna Boy is coming to South Africa after he made these comments and he said before, I'm not coming to South Africa again until y'all fix this mess. Now, a lot of people, and I've been looking on the internet and that's why I felt motivated to do this video because a lot of the comments being made are a lot of people who, one, have been, um, so a lot of them are, are telling him that he's been lying, saying that he's been making up these attacks, which is kind of odd to me because there's like so much evidence if you look at the news articles that there have been attacks in South Africa against other Africans. So when you have those types of people saying, oh, these attacks are fake, they're fake news. It reminds me of something like a Trump supporter. Um, and let me also say that this is not all South Africans. You know, I've, I've seen a lot of people make general statements and say, oh, all South Africans are this, all South Africans are that. And I'm against any general statements against any people. I'm against people saying all Nigerians are scammers or all African Americans are ghetto, all South Africans are um, are xenophobic. You know, clearly there's a, a good amount of people who aren't like that. And Julius Malema being the most uh, vocal and being the most popular to me uh, warrants us to understand that there's a lot of nuance inside of this that's happening happening. However, you're always going to have reactionary people, just like in, in America. We have um, African people who are against um are, are against identifying themselves as African in the same way in South Africa we have South African people who are against um, welcoming other Africans into their country. So you know, but to get to the point, um, Burner Boy, he, he made these statements and obviously he's being attacked for it. And the thing that, you know, surprised me most about the tweets is just how much smoke these, some of these, South, some, some, some South Africans have for other African people. But where is the same smoke for the Europeans that colonized you? Who, where is the same smoke for the people who actually relegated you to these, these uh, slums who took your land, who have you confined inside these areas and don't even have access to not only your own land, but the, the, the gold and riches that your, that your land produces? Where is the smoke for them? Because the fact is that your p condition has nothing to do with whether or not there's, there's uh, Nigerians in your country. It has everything to do with the fact that the colonizers of your country have not retreated, have not changed their policies. Even after apartheid, apartheid remains very much intact because systematically the people of South Africa do not have access to their own resources. This is a very rich continent and it's a very rich country. So South Africa is very rich with gold, diamonds, all types of things. And yet these people, the black people in South Africa are somehow are so poor so where's your smoke for that like you should want accountability how is it that we have oh this is where our ancestors are from this is our country how is it that we don't have access to the gold to the diamonds to the riches for the things that our country produces that's who you should have smoke for i don't ever want to hear you talking about oh nigerians oh nigerians because guess what you had the same colonizer all of us have been colonized by european powers the, those those are your real enemies as burner boy said which i love that he said don't get mad at me Go get, go get mad at your enemies. I'm not your enemy. I'm African. I belong to this continent. These borders that you have been drawn in South Africa, I did not draw those borders. You did not draw those borders. Those borders were drawn by people outside of the African continent. So how dare you try to tell me that I don't belong there? The fact is that the the, the reason that you feel like I don't belong there is because you have been ingrained, ingrained with the fact that colonialism has taught you that this is your reality, taught you that this is your country, taught you that this is your borders, taught you that this is your law and this is your order. So to me, um, him saying, you know, I'm, I, this is... Sorry, I'm saying, you know, this is my, this is my home just like it is yours. It's valid. 
Just like people might try to tell African Americans, you have no claim to the African continent. That's bull because last thing I checked, my ancestors did not tell, did not say that they wanted to leave their continent. My ancestors did not say that they wanted to um, no longer, that they wanted to come to America and no longer have a connection to Africa. My ancestors were taken away in chains. They lost their choice. So if I choose to identify myself with the African continent, I have every right. No one can take that right from us. So, you know. This is all, and I also want to uh, go to Julius Malema because he was getting a lot of heat. And the the thing about it is, I seen comments under his Twitter because I do follow him on Twitter, and some people were saying like, "Oh, we're not going to vote for the EFF because of your stance," you know, because Malema basically supported Burna Boy and said, "You know, come home. This is you know African unity. Come home." Um, and because of his stance, a lot of people were saying, oh, we're not going to vote for EFF now. You know, I would have voted for you, but now I'm not. This is just horrible. This is going to be your undoing. Let me tell you something. EFF is a political party. They are a political party, meaning they make po political decisions. If you're not going to vote for a political party, not because of their politics, but you're not going to vote for them because you don't like their a position that they took in regard to, uh, uh, to, a, to, a, to, a, to an artist, then keep in mind whether or not Burner Boy comes to your country is not going to change your day to day life. Whether or not Burner Boy comes to your country is not going to change your reality. It's not going to give you money. It's not going to give you jobs. It's not going to give you access to your land. It's not going to give you any of those things. However, if land expropriation without compensation does go through, that will change your day to day life. So if you prioritize the fact that he supports Burner Boy over the fact that you don't have access to your land, access to your resources, if that's more important to you, then I promise you, your your political education level is very low. You're you're more emotional than you are politically astute because if you're politically astute, you don't care whether or not he comes to your country, even if you don't like what he says. I don't care what you whether you come to my country. I'm more more invested in the fact that I need access to my land. I need access to my capital. That's the thing that's going to motivate me, not whether or not this uh, this artist comes. So that in itself just didn't make sense to me. How could you not vote for? I can never see myself not voting for someone because I don't. I disagree with something that they said in regard to a, a pop culture or artist. That's not going to change my day to day life. That's not going to change, you know, what happens to me. But it's only going to affect um, my 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 pride, honestly, and my maybe my um, my prejudices. That's the only thing that's going to affect. It's going to offend your prejudices. So, in addition, I also uh, wanted to just be clear. I don't think Burna Boy came to South Africa because he's hurting for money. Because as I said, he's the number one artist in in the Afrobeat this year, I would say. Obviously, it's an Africans Unite Festival. So he's coming as a way to try to heal the divide that has come between Africans and South Africa, other Africans and South Africans, or Africans in South Africa. So to act like, oh, don't come here. We don't need you. Oh, no, we're not going to do this. Like he needs to come there for financial benefit. You're, again, you're being reactionary because you should know he's coming as a way to try to um, bring together our continent. So if you are more concerned with your pride, with your with your ego, and not concerned with African unity, then to me, you're, you're an enemy to all African people, period. I don't care where you are. I don't care if you're in Africa. I don't care if you're in America. I don't care if you're in the Caribbean. I don't care if you're in England. I don't care where you are. If you are more concerned with your pride than you are with the reality of African unity, you're an enemy to your people. So that's all I want to say on this. Um, I would love to see your guys' comments. Um, and again, if you are of African descent in the United States, we are petitioning the United Nations. I um, invite you to join our group, We Charge Colonialism. What are your guys' thoughts and opinions on what's going on with the Burner Boy thing? Um, I'd love to hear from you guys. I will see you all in another video. <laughs>
and saying nothing in the UN about the racist practices uh, that are, that are uh, manifest every day against Negroes in this society. Even in South Africa, those Africans uh, aren't faced with bayonets and aren't faced with police dogs. And aren't, When I was in Beirut, I saw a picture on the front page of a Negro being beaten in Tennessee, on the front page of the paper in Beirut. When I got to Cairo, I saw the same picture of a Negro being beaten in Tennessee. When I got to Lagos, I saw the same picture. So uh, where these African nations, knowing the brutality that is inflicted upon black people in this country, simply because those black people are trying to get what the Supreme Court said they were supposed to have 10 years ago. I, I would be not a man. If I was in a position to bring it in front of the United Nations and didn't do so, I wouldn't be a man. Or whatever. We're facing a global phenomenon of colonialism and it's being practiced on us the same as being practiced on those outside of the borders of the United States. Now, being someone who is of, Afri of African descent in the United States, I wanted to start an initiative to actually bring this as a petition to the United Nations. I think it's very important, first of all, to do this, one, because... Uh, us as a people, we have to start calling it what it is. We have to stop calling it just, oh, we need to fight discrimination. No, we need to fight racism. We have to start calling it what it is. We need to fight colonialism. We need to fight the fact that there is a, a colonial presence in our in our neighborhoods, in our cities. The, the fact that we are being exploited on multiple levels and multiple tiers inside of the United States government. We have to start calling it what it is. 700 per 100,000. Nowhere in the world incarcerates as much as we do. We've seen extremely high rates of exposure to the criminal justice system for African-American men with very low levels of schooling. So if we think about black men who were born in the late 1970s and who were growing up through the American prison boom of the 1980s and the 1990s, the chances that they're going to serve time in state or federal prison if they dropped out of high school is about 70%. So going to prison for that group of black men with very low levels of schooling, that's become a normal life event. And that's really only happened in the last 10 years. We're at this point now where there's about 1.2 million African-American children with a parent who's incarcerated. That's about one in nine. In itself, right? So we want recognition, international recognition, that the actions of the United States are ones that a, col that a colonial master would be doing to its subject. And that is what is happening to our people in the United States. So this is a...